Welcome to the Alaska Weather Show. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you on this Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. And we try to do this each evening through a unique partnership with Alaska Public Media. We have a lot of things to go over tonight, a lot happening in the state, a lot of winter weather has descended upon us. A quick check though of other places in the country. If you want additional weather information on top of what I provide in this broadcast, you can go to weather.gov. It'll bring you to the National Weather Service's online presence, a map of the continental U.S. with Alaska and Hawaii in the lower left. And you simply go and click on anywhere in that map and it'll bring up various forecasts and any relevant watches, warnings, or advisories that are in effect. It's a great way to check up on what the weather is doing like in areas of the country where friends and family live. Well, here in Alaska, we got a lot of wintry weather to contend with these colder temperatures. Winter storm warnings remain effect. Uh, through uh, early uh, Wednesday morning for the Yukon Delta, lower Yukon Valley. This includes areas like Emanoch, uh, Hooper Bay, Scammon Bay, eastward through St. Mary, as well as on up toward Anvik. Six to as much as 10 inches of snow could fall with blizzard conditions at times, or at least near blizzard conditions. Wind advisory and winter weather advisory around the McGrath area and then wind advisories into the central Alaska range. Uh, winds could gust as high as 60 miles an hour up out of the south here through these areas tonight into early Wednesday morning along with some blowing snow. High surf advisory remains in effect into Wednesday for the southwest coast including Kuskokwim and Bristol Bays. We expect uh, water levels along the coast, southwest coast there, to be one to three feet above the highest tide line due to this storm system working its way and passing through the area. Uh, winter weather advisory is in effect for the western Kenai Peninsula, areas like Soldatna, Kenai, and further south there could pick up as much as anywhere from two to six, seven inches of snowfall uh, now uh, through uh, at least early Wednesday morning. And there's even more headlines. Winter storm warning uh, for the Klondike Highway above 1,500 feet. Not so much the town of Skagway, but the highway. As you go up in elevation, as much as 6 to 11 inches of snow could fall late tonight through Wednesday into Wednesday evening. Winter weather advisory is also in effect for areas of the northern panhandle around Haines. Snowfall amounts of two to five inches possible, especially in the higher elevations. Overall though, we are looking at cold temperatures, below normal temperatures here for Halloween into early November, and with a, a potential for above normal precipitation, much of that will be falling in the way of snow, especially away from any coastal areas along the Gulf. And looking at the uh, some of the webcams from the uh, FAA, this afternoon, uh, Chivac uh, winter storm warning in effect, 31 degrees, some snow, blowing snow, fog, in fact, uh, Cape uh, uh, Romans off uh, reported uh, winds at two o'clock this afternoon out of the north northeast at 60 miles an hour, gusting just over 70 miles an hour. They have uh, localized blizzard conditions there along the outer coast of the Yukon Delta. And uh, yesterday, Dutch Harbor had the state's high temperature Tuesday afternoon at 58 degrees. Uh, that milder air is pushing eastward across the Alaska Peninsula into the lower Gulf. And uh, that's going to be part of the moisture and warmth that tries to get this precipitation enhanced, especially as it moves into the panhandle later tonight and on Wednesday. This morning, though, uh, Gulcana uh, did dip down uh, to two below zero for one of the coldest readings to be reported in the state uh, early this Tuesday morning. And looking at uh, Kenai, a winter weather advisory in effect, you're going to pick up several inches of snow there. Uh, through tonight, early Wednesday morning, 27 degrees, uh, snow falling, fog, and uh, temperature again at 27. Skagway, winter storm warning in effect for elevations above 1,500 feet as you go further uh, north there along the Yukon Highway. White Pass could see as much as 6 to 11 inches of snow here later tonight through the day on Wednesday. And here are the advisories. Uh, we have those winter storm warnings in effect in red for uh, areas of the lower Yukon uh, Basin and through the Delta, uh, as I mentioned, Hooper Bay uh, on up toward uh, St. Mary's uh, Mountain Village and up toward uh, Anvik. 
and then winter weather advisories around McGrath along with wind advisories and wind advisories into the central uh, Alaska range. Winds could gust as high as 60 miles an hour along with some blowing snow. Along the southwest coast, uh, including Kuskokwim and uh, Bristol Bays, we are looking at those strong winds helping to push water levels up uh, one to three feet above highest tide levels. So there could be some uh, beach erosion. Uh, we're not expecting any major coastal flooding, but certainly higher surf uh, dangerous rip currents and uh, some beach erosion expected there. In the wake of the system winds go northwest, we could see some hurricane force wind gusts through the gaps there across the Alaska Peninsula, especially around Cold Bay. Some of the wind gusts from the northwest could exceed uh, 70 upwards to even 80, 85 miles an hour uh, during the day on Wednesday. And then further east, that uh, winter weather advisory in effect for the western Kenai Peninsula. Uh, for tonight into early Wednesday morning, uh, a good two to as much as locally six, seven inches of snow could fall in areas of the western Kenai. Blowing snow advisory for Thompson Pass. Snowfall will be on the lighter side, a couple few inches, but it's going to whip around, so there'll be blowing snow. And then the northern panhandle, the winter storm warning in effect for the Klondike Highway as you go uh, north there of Skagway. Uh, White Pass could see as much as six to 11 inches of snow and uh, some of the higher elevations surrounding Haines could pick up several inches of snowfall as well and just north there of Juneau we have a winter weather advisor and then finally in the far north there is a special weather suite there I just kind of highlighted there in blue for the Dalton Highway summits we expect some uh, gusty winds and blowing snow nothing as strong or as heavy as the Alaska range and going further south but keep that in mind if you're going to be traveling through any of the Dalton Highway summits uh, as we go through the day on Wednesday into Wednesday uh, at least the early portion of the night and let's move along satellite imagery shows the curl in the clouds the one low that's currently located near and just maybe west of Bethel broad area of enhanced clouds along the Alaska Peninsula and the North Pacific side that's all moisture streaming northeastward and uh, that's going to bring a <clears throat> good area of precipitation coming into the panhandle here during the day tomorrow. Here is that low this afternoon, uh, as I said, in the southwest interior. It's gradually going to weaken on the west side of the Alaska Range, but as it moves east, it's going to induce a uh, triple point there where you see the warm front connect to the occluded front cold front as that moves into the northern gulf a new low will take shape that'll become the dominant low as that works its way inland later tonight uh, the frontal system there ahead of it will push into the panhandle on wednesday bringing wind uh, and r mainly rain the southern panhandle but the northern part of the panhandle is going to see the accumulating snows and the snows on the backside in through the uh, western uh, southwest interior should begin to gradually diminish as we go into the day on Wednesday but then again you can see that main low now over the northern gulf Wednesday afternoon with uh, some heavier rainfall all along especially the outer uh, coastal areas of the panhandle with some gale force winds another low coming in off uh, uh, the Russian east coast into the northern bearing that drops southeastward and just kind of washes out but brings some additional snow showers along the southwest coast double barrel low sitting over the northern gulf that system will continue to provide inclement weather there along the panhandle northeastern gulf coast and looking at temperatures uh, still some lower 40s in the panhandle otherwise most areas away from the coast will be below freezing temperatures tomorrow 40s to near 50 along the outer panhandle coast craig sitka but out toward the west uh, temperatures uh, only in the 30s just above freezing around say talkeetna and anchorage lows thursday morning single digits toward mcgrath nine above but still in the 40s across the outer and southern parts of the panhandle thursday afternoon temperatures should be below freezing at anchorage and there northward and uh, a bit above freezing along the coast with 40 there at, at uh, kodiak across the far north some single digits above and below zero eastern brooks range yukon flats uh, otherwise teens and 20s common highs wednesday generally uh, still near freezing say at nome but up there along the arctic coast upper teens to lower 20s and for thursday morning uh, a little more widespread temperatures uh, getting in the single digits above and below zero across much of the interior and thursday afternoon we expect temperatures uh, to only be in the single digits and teens across the uh, north along the brooks range and uh, mid upper yukon river still near 30 imanak and uh, uh, Savunga as well as Nome. Here across uh, Wednesday morning, warmest temperatures at Kodiak Island near 40, but falling off even through the Aleutians. 
very strong winds across the area Wednesday across the uh, Alaska Peninsula. Temperatures generally still a little above freezing in the interior southwest. Thursday morning lows will dip down though as you creep up the uh, Yukon River. Uh, readings will dip into the teens, otherwise 20s along much of the southwest interior. And for Thursday afternoon, we expect temperatures generally to stay below freezing the upper Kuskokwim and as you get further up the Yukon Valley, but otherwise mid 30s along the southwest coast and some 40s showing up along the Alaska Peninsula extending out in through the Aleutian chain. And here is the temperature forecast. It's going to take us from Halloween up into the beginning of November. No warm air. We're going to see temperatures below to much below normal, especially across the southeast mainland in through the northern half of the panhandle. So chilly temperatures for the trick-or-treaters. And looking at precipitation with this kind of temperature regime, precipitation is expected to average a bit above normal across the Yukon Valley along uh, in north and west of the Alaska Range. So that would likely be in the form of snow. Uh, further east, near normal precipitation expected there in the uh, southern two-thirds of the panhandle. But nevertheless, uh, we do have an early taste of winter weather that should persist as we head on through uh, the beginning of November. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Well, let's check out the aviation weather. If you have a flight planned Wednesday or on Thursday, we have a couple areas of low pressure. Uh, one that is currently crossing uh, into the southwest interior. New energy will emerge into the northern Gulf, and that'll become the primary low as we get into uh, Wednesday morning and afternoon. And the secondary back low will tend to weaken there over the southwest interior, west side of the Alaska Range. Nevertheless, widespread IFR conditions being created in the southwest interior due to snow and blowing snow and stronger winds. We also have very strong winds creating turbulence, especially along the Alaska Peninsula, southeast corner of the Bering. And then frontal system pushing its way up in through the panhandle will bring uh, some heavier accumulating snow to areas of the northern panhandle and then some warming temperatures in the south, icing conditions, also strong winds, wind shear, turbulence there in through the panhandle as we go through the day on Wednesday. And we see widespread IFR conditions with that frontal band pushing in through the panhandle Wednesday afternoon and along the northeastern uh, Gulf Coast. Uh, also back through portions of the Alaska Range and extending down into especially the north side of the Alaska Peninsula. We expect IFR conditions to persist. And another area of IFR emerging in the northern part of the Bering Sea. There's another little low that's going to be dropping southeastward as we go into Thursday. And by Thursday morning, we see hints of that low uh, bringing IFR conditions again along the southwest coast, especially the YK Delta's Nunavik Island. In the interior, IFR conditions along uh, and east of the, uh, the Alaska Range toward the Elkan border, and then widespread IFR conditions anticipated Thursday morning throughout much of the panhandle. Thursday afternoon, we still see IFR conditions uh, persisting there. Southeast interior mountains, uh, Wrangell, uh, St. Elias Mountains, and also down through uh, especially the inner channels and the inner coastal mountains of the Panhandle, including the Northeast Gulf Coast. And a Tuvik Pash, it's a VFR conditions on Wednesday become MVFR uh, by nightfall. And same thing, Attigan Pass, VFR during much of the daylight hours, but giving way to MVFR conditions. Lake Clark and Merrill should generally be socked in with IFR conditions and uh, wintertime conditions, as well as uh, some stronger winds and turbulence. Uh, Rainy Pass, IFR conditions are anticipated as well as we round up uh, through Windy Pass, IFR conditions uh, through the first half of the day, giving way to MVFR, especially south entrance southward, but still holding on to IFR conditions there along the north entrance. Isabel Pass should see IFR conditions become MVFR and Mentasta Pass MVFR conditions becoming IFR as we go through the daytime on Wednesday. Further south and west, Tanita Pass, IFR conditions definitely there through the morning first half of the day trying to give way to MVFR conditions. And Portage Pass, kind of a split uh, IFR uh, to maybe MVFR, but the IFR conditions will have a tendency to persist there along the east entrance and especially out over Prince William Sound. And finally, Chilkoot and White uh, will be socked in with IFR conditions, potentially some heavier snowfall, uh, not very good uh, flying conditions, uh, nasty conditions, in fact, with wintertime uh, weather there, uh, up there through uh, both uh, Chilkoot and White passes. Freezing levels, only place to expect freezing levels to maybe bump up a little bit would be there across the southwestern southern third of the panhandle. Um, 
and then generally a freezing line, surface freezing line right along the southwest coast and along the northern gulf. We can see that overall in the back side of this low that's going to pump down colder air across the mainland and through the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, north and northeast winds turning northwesterly as you get out across the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians. Greatest threat of uh, icing, considerable moderate, perhaps even some isolated severe icing there. Portions of the Panhandle down through Haida Gwaii and the British Columbia coast uh, above four and 6,000 feet. And those uh, levels may even briefly rise there in the Panhandle as that front pushes on inland with a brief a surge of warmer air aloft. Otherwise, generally above 3,000 feet across southern half of the mainland back out through uh, the Alaska Peninsula. Strong jet core aloft. We see the low center, uh, upper level low center there right over near Prince William Sound. Uh, upwards to 180 knot southwest jet core just south of the Gulf. And then Wednesday getting down to 9,000 feet, 700 millibars. We see a broad strong wind field across uh, areas of the uh, west central bearing and down then just uh, along the Gulf interface north Pacific. And then at 3,000 feet we have that low situated there just east of Prince William Sound. Winds off the Alaska Peninsula northwesterly to 70 knots coming in upwards to 60 knots from the southwest height of Gwaii. We expect severe turbulence possible just off of the uh, Panhandle coast in Haida Gwaii as well as widespread across the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island surface to 4,000 feet. <music>so the sun looking here from the ground seems very constant and quiet but actually when we look at it from space we can see it's quite turbulent and active space weather is activity on the sun and in the near earth space that can affect our technological infrastructure and society The sun is constantly spewing out a stream of particles called the solar wind that goes out into the solar system. And it affects us here near Earth where we're protected by a magnetic field. The interaction between the solar wind and the magnetic field can cause space weather. The Carrington event is the largest storm we've seen in recorded history when we're looking at space weather. but. Every solar cycle, which repeats about every, every 11 years, one estimate estimates that there's a 10% chance of getting a large storm like the Carrington event that could impact us here on Earth. But we see solar storms almost all the time. And these storm storms have an effect on our, our technological infrastructure. Solar storms can cause activity in Earth's atmosphere and magnetosphere that can damage electrical power grids that power our communities, interrupt radio and satellite communications, and can cause our GPS navigation to fail. NOAA is working with its international partners to ensure that we have different vantage points where we can observe space weather. Our space weather observing infrastructure from space includes the, the NOAA Discover satellite, and the NASA A satellite that are stationed upstream of Earth to give us a first buoy measurement of the solar wind. It also includes the ESA NASA SOHO satellite and the NASA STEREO satellite that image the sun and also make chronograph measurements of the outer atmosphere of the sun, the corona, that can tell us when large explosions happen off the sun. We also observe the sun and the Earth's magnetic field from the geostationary location with NOAA's GOES. So the way we use the space weather information from satellites and from the ground is to be able to make forecasts and predictions, just like we do with, with hurricanes and terrestrial weather. We observe the sun and look for activity and see how it develops. and see if it's going to culminate into a large explosion that can affect us here on Earth. NOAA is working with its international partners to expand our observing capability. 
we're committed to observing along the Sun-Earth line. So we're going to do the imaging of the Sun and the upstream buoy measurements of the solar wind along the Sun-Earth axis. The more we understand about the Sun, the more we can prepare for it and become, just like we are a weather-ready nation, become a space weather-ready nation. And as we look forward to humans exploring out into the solar system and advancing our space commerce activities, space weather becomes more and more important. Here at the Space Weather Prediction Center, we monitor space activity as it's occurring back at the sun, and then we issue out a forecast as well as alerts, watches, and warnings as activity is occurring. A typical space weather event would start with a solar flare back at the sun. That solar flare is short-lived and produces fairly short-lived impacts as well, basically impacting communications on the daylit side of the Earth. However, some solar flares are also associated with a coronal mass ejection or an eruption of plasma that's blast off the sun and out into space. As forecasters, it's our job to determine if that cloud of plasma is moving towards Earth and if it comes towards Earth, what the potential impacts may be. Those impacts can range from a fairly low level storm that may produce the aurora a little bit farther south than usual, or can range up into fairly significant magnetic disturbances that don't happen very often, but when they do, they can impact technologies and infrastructure here on Earth. We provide information to lots of different user groups, from airlines to the electric power grid, to emergency managers, aviation, satellite community, lots of different customers. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, and let's start with the sea ice edge before we get to the marine forecast, and the ice is building there up along the Arctic coast. And we're starting to see some shoreline ice take better shape there along the northwest coast, through Piavik down through Point Lake, and some early ice there in through Kotzebue Sound, north side of the uh, Seward Peninsula, uh, Shimaref down through Wales, and also there in uh, Koyuk uh, Inlet, uh, some ice forming. We also had some reports even as far south as parts of Cook Inlet getting a little a little bit of ice formation. And we expect with these colder temperatures that are going to take us now through the end of October into early November, the ice will continue to grow. But across the southeast uh, panhandle on Wednesday, windy conditions. Uh, we expect uh, inner channels uh, 25 to 30 knots south-southeast winds gust as high as 50 knots there near Petersburg and up uh, 40 knots up through Lynn Canal waves five to seven feet there in the entrance cook uh, or I should say um, Dixon entrance 10 foot waves the outer coast 35 to 40 knot uh, gales from the southwest strongest winds west of Yakutat waves building upwards of uh, 19 to 21 feet and on Thursday, with the persistent winds and fetch uh, with the southwesterly flow, we expect some pretty good waves there of the outer coast uh, running as high as uh, upwards to 25 feet south of Gustavus, uh, sick, off of Sitka and Craig. Inner channels, winds southerly still, still 30 knots there down toward Ketchikan, Metlakatla, Dixon entrance, six foot waves, five foot waves around Petersburg, three foot waves in through uh, Lynn Canal. And then in across the northwestern Gulf, Strongest winds coming out of Cook Inlet to just uh, northeast of Kodiak, 40 to 45 knot north to west westerly winds with waves of 12 to 14 feet there. 20 knot north winds in Prince William Sound waves 4 feet off the Kenai northwest winds 25 knots waves 13 feet there in the open waters of the Gulf and 15 to 20 knot winds across the upper and middle Cook Inlet with waves of three to six feet. For Thursday, uh, winds uh, generally continue out of a north or northwesterly direction. Strongest winds upwards of 40 to 45 knot gales flowing out of the uh, mouth of Cook Inlet uh, with waves 15 to around 20 feet there just north of Kodiak in through Prince William Sound. North winds 15 knots and waves a few feet. 
Wednesday across the Alaska Peninsula, we are going to have storm force uh, winds, sustained winds with gusts to hurricane force. Uh, either side, whether it's the Bering or North Pacific, we're looking at 50 to 55 knot storm force winds with gusts as high as 60 to 70 knots, especially in the vicinity there of uh, Cold Bay, False Pass, Sandpoint, and through any of those gaps. Waves on the North Pacific side running uh, as high as uh, oh, 20 to 24 feet and 18 to 23 feet on the Bering side. For Thursday, winds come down a bit, uh, uh, upwards of 40 to 45 knots off of Kodiak Island and on the North Pacific side of the peninsula, waves 17 to near 20 feet. On the uh, Bristol Bay down to north of Cold Bay, 35 to 40 knot west-northwest winds and waves running 14 to 18 feet. Wednesday, we expect northwesterly uh, gales of 45 knots with gusts still upwards to 60 to 65 knots there around Dutch Harbor. But as we go further west, winds fall below gale force from around Atka through Adak and Kiska back down below or around 30 knots and more westerly. Waves on the North Pacific side 13 to 18 feet and 14 to 19 feet highest waves toward uh, the far eastern Aleutians. For Thursday, winds across uh, the eastern half of the Aleutians will generally go back to the west-southwest around 30 to 35 knots there toward uh, Dutch Harbor and then more south-southeasterly west of Adak at 25 uh, knots and uh, waves there about 8 to 11 feet. And across the southwest coast, uh, winds uh, just off of uh, Kuskokwim Bay could still be upwards of 50 knots with gusts to 65 knots. Uh, again, the strongest winds will be there, especially along the north side of the Alaska Peninsula. And further north, north winds 30 knots and Norton Sound waves 6 feet, and northwest winds 35 to 45 knot gales south of St. Lawrence Island to the vicinity of Nunavik Island waves 10 to 16 feet. And on Thursday, still winds out of the northwest to west 35 to 40 knot gales around Nunavik Island back towards St. Paul, St. George waves uh, generally say 15 to 17 feet. North winds Norton Sound and on the south side of St. Lawrence uh, at 25 knots and waves 5 to 10 feet. Arctic coast uh, for Wednesday 25 to 35 knot easterly gales and waves uh, as high as 10 feet in open water turning northeast to north through the lower Chukchi Sea at 15 to 25 knots with waves of 5 to 7 feet. And then on Thursday easterly winds 25 to 30 knots along the Arctic coast waves uh, 8, 9 feet where the, it is ice free and then more northerly 15 knots increasing to 25 knots through the Bering Strait. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.